Okay. All right, welcome back to the class breaks over. We are now looking at the uh, evaluation, self evaluation for your adult teaching plan. Remember, you have an adult lesson plan. That adult lesson plan is what you're about to teach. If you're like Bev, it's counted. You teach it to the youth, that's your adult lesson plan, that's fine. I'm, I'm okay with that. As long as you get to teach from that paper, okay? And then on the expected side is really what's on the lesson plan. And then you got to do the actual. The actual learning antecedents is opposite to your expected. Okay, for example, if you say expected, six people will come. Actual, four people came. That makes sense? And make sure there's comparison to, to because that's what we're trying to base it with. And then uh, what is important is your actual learning transaction. You have your HBLT. And then you're going to say, H, your hook will be 15 minutes. And your actual hook you took longer than 30 minutes. Okay. And that's your actual learning transaction there. Uh, and then for your look, you have an outline for what you're going to do. Verse one, I'll talk about this. Verse six, I'll talk about this. But then the actual, you didn't talk about it. You just skimmed over it. Then write it down. Uh, instead of me going through the detail of my lesson plan on look section, I just glossed over it and I was finished in five minutes. And then your took, you are going to challenge them into small groups by discussing uh, the elements of the lessons. And then on the expected learning uh, transaction, probably. You did not go to small groups because there's only four. And so you just kept the group together and discussed the question. And then you took, same way. Your expected learning outcome is the purpose of this lesson was to encourage the student to, and then you're going to ask the question, did, what was the actual learning outcome? And you could say, um, I don't think this, my students fully understood the purpose of and state the purpose because and you state it. Or you could say they fully understood it. And why? Because when I ask them, is there any questions, no one raised their hand. <laughs> right? So um, that is a form that should be in your in that should be in my inbox once you finish teaching. Okay. Hopefully you taught last Sunday. Any one of you thought you taught your Sunday school yet? You did already your lesson plan? Okay. Anyone else? Okay, good. And then not from your lesson plan yet. Maybe tomorrow. Sure. Yeah, please do. Please do. And again, if you don't have an audience, you don't have a class, don't fret. You can always ask for people to come to your house. Yeah, I know Marion was planning that today. And I don't know if it happened. She invited five of her friends to come and she's going to teach her lesson for them. One hour. Does your family count? Does your family count? Sure. Yeah. Family family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, not only that, but remember the evaluation you're going to hold is not them towards you. It's you towards you. So it doesn't really matter who the audience is. And I'm sure uh, it might create some easy dynamics, but again, it's it's your deployment of your lesson plan. That's what we're. That's what you are grading yourself with. How did I do with my expected to the actual? Okay, so far so good. All right, ready to bag it? Anybody wants a form? We got an extra here. Okay, let's take your lesson plan worksheet. And we're going to do some exercises today. Okay. Our, our goal today is to learn how to fully utilize this form. My concern is as I was reading some of your forms, um, you guys are forgetting some of the key words. Oh, I'm sorry. You're, um, what, what did you say? Both. Both? Okay. Here. Um, and so there are key words that should be prevalent to your forms. You have form five there, right? Yeah, that's form five. That's correct. Um, 
And if it is not there, I begin to wonder if you understood, right? Because some of you, like for example, your exegetical idea, you put like a topic in there and it's not a topic. Uh, like for example, what did I read it with? Um, well, I'll just give you an example. Exegetical idea. Uh, uh, how God loves the world. And like, no. <laughs> when we say exegetical idea, we're lo looking at the pieces of your verses. Right? Uh, so we're going to go to an example right now. Okay, you ready? All right. I don't have a Bible verse in mind, but anybody wants to want to pick a Bible verse? Psalm 100. Why are we picking that verse? Okay. All right. Psalm what? Psalm 100. Okay. Psalm 100. Okay. And who wrote the book? David. David. David, David. David. It's a Psalm of David. How do you know? Well, it didn't say it's David, but we assume it's David because most of Psalm is written by David. All right. And it's, it's, um, um, yeah, there's a few things here that we, we can learn from. Okay. Everybody, let's read Psalm 100. And uh, I'll read one verse. We're going to go around. Remember, we, this is Monday. Monday exercise. Okay. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. A psalm, a psalm for giving thanks. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Verse 2, June. Johnny, three. Know that the Lord is God. Okay, anybody saw an outline? None? All right, let's read again. Ready? Verse one. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. June. I'm sorry, Hazel. <laughs> Hazel, verse one. Verse one? Yeah. Shout for, the, for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Okay. Verse two. By the way, we're rereading it because I want you to con conceptualize the passage. This is the exercise we're doing here. This is your Monday reading. And if you're just reading it, nothing's, nothing's grabbing on your head, then you're not doing it right. Because that's the purpose of why you're reading it. Right? We're conceptualizing it. First is shout. Verse 2. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Yeah. Oh, Okay, guys, do me a favor. When you're talking, unmute your microphones, okay? All right. Uh, did we find any Bible? What, what, what went, what jumped out on you? God is Almighty. God is Almighty. He jumped out yeah. because that the Lord is there for his people. It's working. <laughs> Bev, I don't need your microphone. I'm sorry. Uh, it describes some of his creations. And his love 
Okay. And that he is, I think, worthy to be praised. Okay, so there's a response. Anyone else? It's like uh, that the Lord is you're giving God all the praises. You got to shout to him. You got to worship him. And you know he is good. You're, you're giving everything to him. Okay. Sounds good. Anyone else? You should stand up for the Lord, I believe. He's showing because they're praising him. They're doing everything to let the Lord know that. Very thankful for them. All right, hang on. Let me go back to June. Hold that thought. I'm going to go to Claude and then to Randy and then to June. All right, Claude, go ahead. From this, I get like the people at this time are doing everything they can to thank the Lord because they know he's been faithful to them. You know, they've been uh, they praising him because of what he has done for them. Uh huh. So the reasons for Thanksgiving, huh? All right, moving on. Uh, Randy? Uh, it speaks to me as a call of worship to the Lord, to his people in Israel. Okay. So exegetically, it's calling the people of Israel to worship the Lord. Like that. Good. Glad you pointed that out. June, your turn. I need your microphone, June. During these days, um, giving thanks to God uh, by shouting, worshiping, and uh, knowing Him, and entering His gates. Okay. All right. Good. Good. So, so in a sense, uh, it, it's becoming clear to you. You you're formulating your own content or outline, right? right. The, the important thing is you're formulating that. Anyone else? I will come. I think you've been worshiping God. Attitudes of worshiping. Shouting to the Lord, have gladness, and sing joyful songs, and hold hands to the Lord, thanksgiving, and praise His name. Okay. All right. Beautiful. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Got it. I need your microphone. Just like what it say down here, um, give giving uh, grateful praise to the Lord at the same time uh, why or what's the reason why we give thanks and why the, what's the reason of giving uh, praise to the Lord okay right. so the passage would be Psalm 100. Um, and immediately because it's, it's, it's worship, worship it's giving, it's God, God, it's goodness, goodness, it's, it's, it's challenging, it's good job with that, right? Job with that right? Right? And it's, 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 it's driven for, it's driven to bring them from where they're at to the reality of where God is, the domain of God. Uh, what, are, what, are, what are some Bible verses out there that immediately comes out? That kind of relates to what's going on here. Yeah, look it up first before you say it. Um, verse one. Uh, for the first three, verse three, I immediately recall that I will not be you nor forsake you. Joshua chapter, uh, chapter. I, I will never leave you nor forsake. Sounds like you. Hebrews 13, 1, 2, I think. But it's when when Joshua started to lead the people into the promised land. And 
that's yeah, that's ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Uh, be courageous or something. All right. Because first, minus the Bible verse. That's the one. Looking for the second. One. Oh. Okay, let me let me interject. It, it is a sum of thanksgiving immediately. Uh, uh, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God. Yes. Right? And that's First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Right? There you go. Chapter 1, verse 5. Yes. And uh, let's say it again. Yeah. Uh, he was just uh, telling me the first, so Joshua 1, um, 5. Joshua 1, 5. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. Joshua chapter 1. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. What's the text? The text? Was Joshua installed it? Look at the text. Joshua chapter one, verse five. Got it. Good. All right. Excellent. Any other cross references? Look at the word. Shout for joy. Worship the Lord. Know the Lord. Uh, enter into His gate. The Lord is good. Give thanks to Him. Different themes, but they're all correlated. But once you start emphasizing the different themes, you can pick out some proper cross references. Any others? Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Good. Anyone else? Anyone else? Psalm 95 in verse 2 in our text, uh, let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Psalm 95. Uh, verse 2. Verse 3. Two. Two, two. Two. Excellent. All right, we'll keep it that way for now. So we get some Old Testament. Exegetical idea. Remember, this is not a title. They said the idea of your exegesis. And when we're looking for exegetical idea, we are also uh, looking for the elements of the scriptures to appear in this section. Okay. And I'm going to borrow what Randy said. Uh, the psalmist, David, challenges God's people, the Jewish people. That's preliminary right there. To express their thanksgiving in many ways exegetical ideas such as shouting to him worshiping to him knowing him entering this gates for the purpose because for the reason that god is good that makes sense i'm writing that down okay so i will say david challenges god's people to express their thanks by shouting, worshiping, knowing, entering, because the Lord is good. Did you get a sense what verses did we just cover in that exegetical statement? All right. Does, does this make sense? You've summarized your Bible verse into one statement. Right? And that's why it's very important when you're reading the Bible, uh, you're creating a cohesive statement that embodies the whole scripture. That's the exegetical idea. So that when you're reading it, without even looking at the Bible verses, the, the idea came out from the Bible. And the word exegesis is, is, that, is that we extract from, right? Exactly. All right. So what's now the purpose of the lesson? Now, this is where you can become very, very subjective because depending on what, depending on your age group, depending on the students, depending on what realities they're in 
Some of you probably will emphasize the enter into his gates. Some of you might see this as a learning how to thank God in crisis and, and therefore should become worshiping and shouting and joy. Maybe some of you might say um, the different modes of worshiping God, such as shouting and singing and coming to God and knowing God, right? So depending on that idea, give, give me other ideas. Let me, let me come from you. Give me other ideas. I mean your microphone. Remember, this is about uh, your purpose for the student. So it's preempted with the purpose of this lesson is to. Bev, go ahead. Um, if the student, the students, a reason to praise and worship God. Okay, good, like that. Okay. Anyone else? Go ahead, Bev. Write that down. Okay. Randy. One try. Okay. So God's uh, God's special relationship uh, with Israel. Uh, uh, with with the art of acknowledging for phrases and worship, uh, for, and done for his people with his people. Okay, now I want you to say again that statement. So it's a God's special relationship with Israel, uh, which ought to acknowledge the the Lord. Because of what he has done for his people. Okay. <clears throat> the purpose statement or the teaching idea is about what? What you expect from your student. So that statement is an exegetical rather than a purpose. Uh huh. Right, it, it is it is right there in the exegetical idea. So when it comes to purpose, you start it with the purpose of this lesson is okay. Go ahead, Randy, and, and try to recraft that with that. With that. No, because that's the exegetical uh, exegetical idea, and the purpose is uh, the purpose of this lesson is to show how we worship God and acknowledge. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, write it down. That's good. I like that. Danny? I came up with the purpose of the lesson is to express different ways to praise the Lord and the outcome is to know who God is. One more thing, and remember it's in relation to the students, so we might want to say the purpose of this lesson is to show the student or so that the student will learn, so the student's got to be in there, okay? Good. And Danny, that was very good. Anyone else? Okay. Okay, good. The purpose of this lesson is to help the student acknowledge that God made us and how we can and how we can give back to him. Okay, good. I like that. All right, we, is it making sense so far? That's the teaching idea. Every time you get there, this is the perp this is what I want to accomplish to my students. So at the very end of your lesson, you should be coming back to here. Because you're going to ask, have I met that purpose? Okay. All right. We're going to go to cognitive now. We're going to go to the four domains. The four domains. Now we're challenging the students. And our goal is we're going to look at the four entry points of the student. And we're going to say, okay, how can I bring this lesson in their cognitive mind? Again, I mean, the idea is cognitive has something to do with their intellect. 
okay? How can I challenge them through the scripture in their heart domain, in their, in their feeling domain? Number three, how can I challenge my student in their volitional domain, meaning what they need to change now, what they need to decide now, what commitment can they make now? And number four, behavioral, I'm going to ask a question, what goal can I make that has the idea of uh, uh, a commitment that they will make so that it will be a lasting change, a behavior that will change for the rest of their life. Rather, it's not just a one-time decision, but something that's recurring in their life. Okay, so let's craft it. I'll start. Okay, we're going to go around. I want you to give me a cognitive goal. And, and hopefully you don't copy anyone else's. But that, that's okay. Because how much goals can you come out in this, with this one anyway, right? Okay, online friends, I need you to interject because I might, I might leave you behind. Okay, so cognitive mind. And if I look at the scripture, I, immediately my cognitive verse is what? I mean, what? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, what? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. no. Understand. Knowing. Yeah. 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 Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> the mind. The mind. Okay, okay. The well, mind. You, you could stretch it that way. But I'm looking at the most obvious. Look at your keywords. No, in, in Yeah. God. The word is know that the Lord, uh, he is God. So my cognitive goal is what? I would say my goal to my student is for them to know how God, how how God, how how God is Lord for them. How is God Lord over them? And those are two critical words. God is like a title. Lord is like a function, right? So how can my students know that God is Lord over them? No, it's 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 a lot of information here. Okay, that could be a cognitive goal. All right, we're gonna go around. Why don't we not not go around? Let's let me just pick. <laughs> Let's just go with the next two. Okay, June and Danny, try it. Give me the next two cognitive goals that you could have. The goal, the goal, the goal of, uh, and remember the keywords for cognitive is no, know and yeah. understand and comprehend, discover. Go ahead. So, uh, my goal down here is for the students to know that the Lord God is good forever. And his love and good for Okay. Yeah. Again? Again. The goal here is for them to know that God loves you. Okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. Write it down because we're going to have a PLA for you. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Up to your one point. Oh, that's it. Okay, yeah, good. I, I like, yeah, oh, June. Okay, brother June, go ahead. <laughs> take the <rest. laughs> Sorry, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna take a step on effective part. So first, uh, first goal come in mind is uh, sing with gladness because uh, you have to sing with gladness. Um, because when, when you're seeing with gladness, uh, it shows the joy that, that you have in, in, in. Okay. Because when you sing with gladness, um, it touches your heart, or oh, touches, when it comes from, when you sing from the heart, it 
shows that you are singing in gladness. Because <laughs> you shout, you shout for the joy. It's, 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 right, right, right. I'm trying to. Uh, so get, to make uh, it, to make, to make it cognitive. Because right now it sounds like affect, affected behavior. Oh, I was affected. <laughs> that sounds, that sounds like affected. <laughs> Your mind, all that is affected. No, uh, yeah, it is a fact. Oh, there you go. That, uh, yeah, it's got to be the same thing. That is a fact. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, good, good. Okay, let's go to a fact. You and you have a fact. The fact is, is something, something to do with appealing, subjective, it's appealing to emotion. Appealing, appealing to, to uh, uh, the, 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 the heart of the person. Okay, everybody, to make it a lot simpler, go to page 161 of your Richard and Red the keywords are the there keywords that we're gonna use, okay? okay? So anything so, that's anything not that's in this list, not in this list. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> oh, 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 page. oh, page. And there's also in hard teaching in page 102. Page 102. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see that from our example. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But the, uh, the, the, uh, the 161 of Richard and Redfield uh, specifies the keywords uh, specifies because keywords the keywords trigger, because right? Keywords that's exactly trigger, what I wanted to do. Right? Okay, exactly we are in we are insight, insight now, or which is now, what we call what the, we call the uh, effective. Uh, effective. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, you, know you know what? what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's, uh, the uh, word the is attitude. attitude. Uh, no, 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 no. Insight. Insight. You're right. Insights. Insight. Two separate, valid, and comprehensive. Like small Insights. knowledge. So, the discovery is more of a cognitive. Two are for. I would, I would say, say so. Yes. I would say. Examine or insightful. There you go. There you go. Right. All right. That's effective. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, okay. 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 So. Go ahead. So the, one of the goals could be something relating to you they have to reflect on his faithfulness, which continues from your generation to all generations. Reflect on his faithfulness. Reflect on God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness for all generations. All generations. All right? Like that. Good. Okay, now we are in volitional. Volitional. This is uh, the keywords here are to choose or to make or to to okay. So a decision. That's the key there. A decision. What do you think, Angel? Yeah. Um, I I will sound as a forecaster for the students to develop the right part in the worship and stuff. Um, what is now? Where you at? Yeah. What is now? Volitional. Ask. Say it again. Um. 
goal is for the students to develop the right part in their Okay. Or just that, that, that was that part of Well, not only that, but the word develop is a, it's a word for continuous. Okay. Volitional is at that point, at that moment. So it's like more like to help the student to choose to worship the Lord, right? Or something like that. So, so, so at that moment, at that time. So if it's a music to help the student to choose God with music. And what what was what did you say about now? Um, develop what now? Um, the right heart for worshiping God. Then, if I want to make that volitional, I would say for the student to commit their heart to Jesus for the uh, a heart of worship. So the the idea is the key is today now I want you to commit. Yeah. Good. If I were to put a volitional here, uh, which is a, a here and now, is to say, um, is to is to ask the student to be present at the time of their worship to God. Is 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 to ask the student to have awareness of mind in their worship to God. Because a lot of time when they worship, where's their mind? Like self. What's That's for right. dinner? What's for dinner, right? <laughs> All right. Let's go to behavioral now. By the way, you're writing down these things because we're gonna have a PLA for them, right? Behavioral now. This is where the developing comes. This is now the a continuous process that I would like to begin today. What is it that out of Psalm 100 we can ask the students to develop or to make commitments to begin with? And some of the keywords is to become, to develop, which is in your 102. And then uh, 161 is to uh, internalize, uh, produce, or, or yeah. Right. Okay, June, you want to take a crack of this? Behavioral. Oh, in, in, in your uh, in your heart deep teaching, Bev pointed us to 102. One, 101. That's right. 101 is a better chart than the one with Richard and Brett Felt. So go to go to uh, heart deep teaching 101. There, the keywords are there. Thank you, Bev. I wasn't missing. Them. <laughs> I'm insisting. No, I corrected myself. I didn't okay. say one or two, but I, if I'm looking at it, it's it is. down leading that first one there. But yeah. The first one. Uh huh. That's why I use the word develop for the impossible. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Develop a positive mm -hmm. attitude. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Be convinced of. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess in that sense. Good. But it's more like volitional will. Yeah? Volitional will. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, the idea is I will choose to. Yeah. And the behavioral is more of I will develop or lead to. Uh, actually doing it to create a, a pattern. Right. As an outcome of what they heard. As an outcome of the volition, possibly. Right. Good. Okay, June, you want to help us out? No, wait. We, we, go go online. Online. we went one we can go, go online. Let's let's go with Claude. Claude, you want to take a crack of this? Uh, we're asking the question a behavioral goal for Psalm 100. And some of the keywords are on. I would say be more confident 
in the way you feel about the Lord? Be becoming more confident in the way you feel about the Lord. Yeah, because you're trying to appreciate him. All right. Or let's bring it closer to your exegesis. Become more aware of the goodness of the Lord. How's that? Okay. Yeah, because that's yeah, just become, five. More, become aware of because but I got you. You said become aware of the goodness of the Lord. Right. Becoming more aware of the goodness of the Lord. Becoming more aware of the goodness of the Lord. That's good. That's good. Okay, uh, Randy, I'm going to take a shot of behavior out there. Give us a sample. Okay, and your so words are on so in page 101, yeah? Page 101 of... Uh, okay. Yes. Uh... I the the goal of the behavior that I that comes up is to show the desire uh, of worship of different ways of worship or express the desire of worship to worship God. I see what you're saying. Express is more of volitional. Behavioral is more continuous. So I would probably tweet that and I would say um, create uh, to help develop a lifestyle of what is the word that you said? Worship, worship God. Yeah, a lifestyle of worship, right? To help develop a lifestyle of worship. Not just to express, express is like now. But now behavioral is an ongoing pattern. So you're going, maybe the best would be to develop, I forgot now the, the phrase. Desire. The, des the, the desire. desire. Yeah, to develop a desire of, continue to of stay. Course, yeah. Okay, good. All right, so we have we have a few of the cognitive, we have a few affective, we have a few volitional. We have a few behavioral. Now, out of your goal, we're going to create a PLA. And a PLA is any kind of activity from drama, skit, mind, research, study, discussion, small group, field trip, um, uh, icebreakers to um, questionnaires, case studies. Drama, music, poetry. Music. All right. Okay. But you just don't state the activity. You have to relate the activity to the goal. So instead of me just saying drama, I will say if my cognitive is for them to know if, the, if God is Lord over their lives, therefore my drama will be it is a drama that points. The contrast, a life without Lord and a life with Lord. That makes sense? That's from the cognitive goal of, of develop, of, of knowing if God is Lord. Over, to develop, is to understand if God is Lord over their lives. With that goal, I will do a PLA of drama that has a life without Lord and a life with Lord. Okay, let's move on. What is your cognitive PLA? We're going to reverse this time. Hazel, let's start with you. Cognitive PLA. Give me your cognitive, state it, and then tell me your PLA. Oh? I, I copied the one you said earlier uh, to know how God is the Lord over your life. Okay, you want to do the effective then? You gotta do something. Because we're here to help you. <laughs> right, guys? Okay, yeah, unmute your microphone. Because I wrote down, oh, sorry, Pastor. I wrote down earlier for the effective is um, for the student to know um, 
to know how to have the right heart in worshiping God, maybe um maybe let them sing a song. All right, a song. Oh. <laughs> Again, we just don't say drama. We just don't say sing a song. Now you gotta really get it. Um, a song that would uh describe who God is, or I don't know what song right. Okay. Remember, the goal is to develop a heart of worship. Yes. A song could be that has the words of a heart of, of worship. worship. What song is that? <laughs> I'm Just coming back to the, the heart, heart of, worship. of worship. Right? Yes. And it's all about you. It's all about you. Yeah. Perfect. Right there. Boom. Okay. Got it? Yes. Made that? Yes. Oh, you yeah. can use that too. Yes, and when a Danish song a while ago, I don't know it. My heart. Okay, PLA is music. I like that. Good. Okay, Ben, let's go with you. Pick a pick a a domain and PLA. Uh, wait, I mute. I mute. I mute. I mute. He's on. Uh, a possible PLA that I've used that I think that would be helpful in this uh, cognitive is I've had my youth look at their music genres in their phone and think for themselves if it's appropriate music or music that will worship God. Wow, strong, powerful. Right, so look at your playlist. Would that be on the volitional factor? Because I know we wrote down help students to choose um, faculty music. Right, you could, yeah. you, you could do that volitional to say, today, yeah. erase choose. what's yeah. not included in your playlist. Yeah. That's volitional. But, but how right I told them is, think right. if your music that you're listening to is giving you a heart of worship. Nice. Okay, Danny. Okay, uh, uh, Ghani. <laughs> uh, you can choose whatever domain and give us a PLA. State your domain first. Okay, and what is the goal? Okay, becoming aware of the goodness of God. And what's the PLA? Okay, the PLA, activity. Uh, unmute your microphone. The activity is, uh, I will ask them to look around. The environment, what they see, and, and <laughs> it's about God's creation, the knowledge who created heaven and earth. Okay, I like that. Amen. I like that. Very good. That's a good PLA. That's a good PLA. In, in fact, you should do your class outside. Of that. Yeah, that is a good deal. I like that. All right, good. Okay. <laughs> this is the reason, and I'm just going to interject this quick. This is the reason why early Christianity was fascinated with the mosaic prisms and pictures inside the cathedrals, and and the buildings were cathedrally made. That every carvings on the post. On the ceiling, uh, the work of Michelangelo in the in the Vatican City. These are all for that. Ghani is because they limit Christianity within the church, the building. So they have to recreate creation inside the building. Well, we know that we've gotten away from that already, right? We know that God is everywhere. So now, the only thing that makes us feel about church is the flower in front of the the table and the cross in the middle of the and really it's kind of cut and dry right it doesn't really give us that liturgical 
expressions where where there are bells and choirs and lighted scents and organ. organ playing in the background. So none of that, because because of that, Dani, brilliant. Bring them outside, PLA, bring them outside and say, out of God's creation. What, what are you volitional now? Uh, oh, and what, what's your what's your domain? Uh, behavior. So so say, uh, out and, and because behavioral is something that has to happen afterwards. You're gonna say. Uh, you're going to say, develop a lifestyle when every time you are outside, you are seeing, how can you see God in his creation? Yeah, yeah there you go. All right. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. I like this. You guys are coming up with good stuff. Okay. Um, June, give me your domain and tell me your goal and your PLA. Um. My domain is uh, behavioral as well as uh, Father Dani becoming. But I use the illustration, bringing in to, uh, different varieties of fruits to, to the students and give them taste of it so that after the lessons, when they come in eating any fruits that come into their lives, they it's a it's a God's blessing to them, and it's uh, it gave give them the appreciations in God's uh, I guess uh, blessings. Yeah, yeah. So you see, fruit it is it is a variety of fruits, maybe apples, oranges. Oh, a real fruit. fruit. Yeah, a uh, taste of it because okay. uh, it is a continuous uh, I guess reminder for them that. God's always blessing you with a lot. So okay, have... got it. So the object lesson is is your PLA, is that right? The fruit. The is that your PLA? Is that your? Yes, that's the PLA. It's the PLA. Yeah. It's, it's the fruits, right? And the variety of, speaks about the variety. Of... Sure, sure. Why not? Why not? There you go. Uh huh. <laughs> What's that? I like you guys' creativity. That's good. Okay, let's go back online. Let's go with Claude. Oh, okay, hang on, hang on. Danny, Danny first. Go ahead, Danny. Unmute your microphone. Okay, so the one I chose was reflect the heart, reflect on his faithful faithfulness through all generations. That's the goal. Effective. Effective. That's the goal. And my PLA would be something like draw an imaginary line on a table, not the table, piece of paper uh, on a scale of one to 10 and have the students or whoever evaluate themselves on like where their faithfulness is to God as a child, as a teen, youth, and then make, well, depending on your age group, what you're teaching, adult and kind of put different marks, have the students, each color are a different student. And you can see how they grew in their faithfulness. And because it's behavioral. I can't hear you. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Okay, can uh, Danny was just uh, uh, saying that the PLA for uh, generational, the generational faithfulness, faithfulness, yeah, is to create a timeline for every every student will create a timeline and determine where their spiritual uh, veracity is 
when they were young, when they're in the teens, when they are the common present. And I suggested, because it's behavioral, push it all the way, even the future. Where do you think your spiritual life will be from this point on? Put a bar. Two months from now, four months from now, one year from now. Yeah, set a goal or prophetic goal. A prophetic goal. Excellent. Okay, who's our, we're back on online, Claude. We'll start with you and then Randy next. Tell us yeah, your I can't, mm -hmm. I can't figure it out right now. I'm sorry. Oh, we're here to help you, bro. No worries. I'm yeah. drawing a blank here. Okay, so let's 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 step back and let's let's help you out. There are four domains, which is the mind, the heart, the hand, and the feet. We're saying that these are the four entry ways on how people learn. And so we're coming up with goals for everything. For the mind, we're saying you've got to know if God is Lord over your life. That's verse three. And then for affective, mm -hmm. we're saying let's create a, a closeness in God. And how do you know you're close with God? On volition, we're asking mm -hmm. the student to make a decision now and say in this, this is the goal for each student to, to make to start singing godly music beginning today. And what would be your godly music? And then for behavioral, we're suggesting from this point on, our goal is to develop a, a worshipful attitude such as thanksgiving and worship. Okay, go ahead, Claude. Okay. For the mind, I would say you have to develop the frame of mind that God is there for you because you praise him because you love him. And you know the PR, the plan lesson would be uh, for the person in mind to uh, you plan it to develop their mind to look at God as God is there for them. You know that's my okay. because you're praising them because He's there for you. For All right, heart. Let's, let's at, stop you there, Claude. That's a good. Uh, goal for and i would say that's cognitive i can tell that's cognitive we just did right is to develop um a a uh, an understanding of the goodness of god in their lives and so your pla your possible learning activity and if i could help interject is at that point you are going to ask each student to name two realities that made God good to them, which really is count your blessings, name them one by one. And it right. could be a song and then a testimony, each student taking a bite of two things that made them say God is good to them. All right, great. That's a PLA right there. That's an activity. You notice it's an activity, testimonial. All right, Randy, let's go with you. Okay, so the the objective for the cognitive is to know the goal is to know the different uh, kinds ways of worship and to do that in a process learning activity is uh, by the way of music that we could uh, identify or classify it is a worship or phrase like an example of the songs to go with the loop that they could say a song, sing a song, uh, for, uh, song that is on praises and a song with worship. Okay, very good. I like that. Excellent. I think you're getting this, but we have a second page <laughs> and the time is out. So I'm going to I'm going to marathon through this, interject as much as you could, because I want to hear from you. So if I'm the one doing the lesson, and it's for my adult class, my hook will be, I'm going to play two kinds of music at the beginning of the session, while everyone is just doing whatever, and I want to see how they will respond. I will play an ungodly music, non-Christian, and then I will play a godly music, a Christian music. And then I will stop that music and I will ask the student, what have you observed the difference between these two music? All right, that's the hook, 15 minutes. Then I will go to my book outline and I will say, 
there are four expressions that we could express ourselves that we are really dominated by the lordship of God. And why lordship? Well, because verse three, the Lord is God, is the lordship of God. And what are those expressions? You will shout for Jesus. You will worship Jesus. You will get to know Jesus through his word. And you will go to church, verse four, enter into his gates. All right. And number five, you will get to know God even more. That's verse five. So now I've I process my book content outline. I will get to know God in five ways. Shouting, worshiping, knowing through his word, entering through his church, and getting close to God um, uh, by, by worship. My methodology on, on the five outlines, I would say for the shouting, I will encourage the kids uh, I mean, the, the, my students to um, uh, for the shout. I will in, I will encourage my. Oh no! I will talk about. I will talk about. Um, what is her name? Uh, she is one of the lead teacher in Scientology, um, and she shouts on the cliff because Scientology believes that they are God. She shouts on the cliff. Claiming to be God. I am God. I am God. She's shouting this. And I will use the methodology of using her life. If I could remember her name. To tell them that what she's shouting is, is ineffective. What we should be shouting is not I am God. But you are God. I will use that for my first methodology. My, my methodology for worship. The first shout unto the Lord, verse 1. My methodology for worship the Lord with gladness is um, to ask the student to choose which is your best expression of worship, which makes you worship. Listening to music, listening to preaching, coming to church, going to Sunday school. And I'll just go four or youth night, five. Okay? And I will rank it. And I will ask a student, why did they choose what this area? And I will do that also cohesively as a, as a class. And I would say as a class, we all lean to coming to church as our form of worship. Okay. Number three, knowing that the Lord is God has something to do with God's word. And therefore, my methodology there is memorize scripture. Matthew 4.4 4 would be very good. Actually, Psalm 100 is very good to memorize. I will encourage the student as a methodology to say, in order to know the Lord is to memorize his word or to know God through his word. Therefore, let's try to memorize at least verse one. Everybody, Psalm 100, verse one. Ready? Begin. Shout to the Lord, all the earth. Perfect. Good. All right. Now you're headed to verse two before you know it. Okay. Then my methodology for verse four is enter his gates with thanksgiving. And I will ask, my methodology there would be, to ask the student in, in small groups, probably I'll divide it into small groups and ask within the group, how many times have you been to church for the past 10 weeks? Because you have to enter. If you have not entered, then you have not reached the 10 weeks, right? Okay, so we're just gonna rank it. And then finally, my methodology for the Lord is good is to recount the goodness of God and maybe to sing the song Good, good father, who am I in my mind? Then I'm going to go to my look. And as introspection, I will probably, uh, I will gather small groups and I will ask them um, um, because my objective is to, to create worshipers out of them at the end of the session. My look would be, what can I offer to the Lord in my time of worship? And I will probably underscore the fact that worship is not just simply saying, telling, but giving, right? Giving our lives to the Lord. So my look there would be to divide it into small group and to, for them to ask, answer the question, what is it that I could give to the Lord? That would be my total expression of worship to him. Some would probably say, I'm going to give my money. Others would say, I'm going to give my iPad. Or the best answer is I'm going to give my life. 
right? And finally, yeah, or I will sign up for which is the took the took. Now the took, which is not part of here, it should be in the next page. The took would be, what's my immediate decision? How are you going to express your worship beginning today? And I'm going to ask the students, could you make a this? Could you for the next three for the next month? <coughs> Um, emphasize one form of worship that you would do regularly. And some of them would say reading scripture. Others would say praying, praying. Probably some would say going to fellowship or attending a Bible study. Maybe some would say by sharing Jesus four times this month. Whatever the case, that's going to be my look, my took, my took. And then I will close in prayer and I will Ask them to write it on a piece of paper so that a month from now, we can always look back and say, do you remember last month you made a commitment to do this? Where are you today? All right, that's my lesson plan. That's your lesson plan. That's our lesson plan based on Psalm 100. And might I say congratulations, class. That was a job well done. What do you all think? Very good. Very good. Okay. Look at that. See, it's, it's done. It's done. Can I Look, join the team? You can. <laughs> <laughs> you can teach it now. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, so pick a verse and and whatever your verse is Sunday is, use the form, and and boy, that it'll, it's gonna be exciting. I think you guys are you guys are getting this. Next week we're gonna try to hit again another exercise as we talk about teaching children. Yeah. Oh, um, yes, there is an annual meeting on November 4 and 5. I'm going to ask you, class, and, I'm, and uh, we're going to say bye-bye to now to our recording. Thank you again for hanging out with us. This is how we make better teachers, better Bible teachers out of, of our lessons. So thank you for hanging out with us.